Today we are going to do a quick review of my experience with the Dexcom uh, CGM, Continuous Glucose Monitor, and I'll let you know how it's changed what I do. So this is it. We're going to uh, see how it feels. So it's just, it's a filament that goes under your skin into the interstitial fluid, not into your blood. I'm using the Dexcom G7, so we'll see how this thing goes on. I watched a video, so I don't think I'm not reading the instructions at all. I watched a little video on how to do it. So the first thing I need to do is use my camera to scan QR code. So then it identifies the sensor and it pairs it because it, it communicates it communicates via Bluetooth, <laughs> so, which is crazy. So here's the little thing, and this um, apparently like is trigger loaded, so it'll just zap it in so I don't have to like stab it in my cell. Which, which I like because I'm a little bit of a chicken in those things. Okay, so I just took this cap off, and then you can see the little filament in there. So I'm gonna hold it like this with my thumb on the trigger. This is kind of hard to do on yourself. So you have to push it in hard. I'll make sure I have it kind of where I want it so that it's right in the back. Let's try that. So I'm pushing it down hard, and then I'm gonna push the button. That's a scary noise, but I actually literally felt nothing. Like, not even like a little, I was prepared for it to feel like a pinch, you know, but I didn't feel anything other than the, the thing kind of slapped my arm a little. So now I tell it that that new sensor has been installed and it's requesting to pair now. So it's come up requesting to pair and then it's um, doing a sensor warm up. So it won't have any readings for about half an hour. Um, it just needs to kind of, I don't know what, <laughs> warm up, I guess. So, um, so there it is, it's stuck in there and they tell you to just kind of rub, rub around like where the thing is, you're supposed to push it in, I think too, actually. So I just push it, it doesn't hurt at all, at all, at all. You don't feel, I don't feel anything. So push it in just to help it stick. I didn't put on any lotion. Um, I'm traveling right now for the global goaltending retreat, but if I was at home, I would have wiped my arm with alcohol or something, but okay. And then I ordered also, because I'm gonna be active and such, and I don't want it to fall off, um, I ordered, some of these which are just little kind of donut things that will go around it come saw and kind of help help hold it in place so i'll show you what it looks like once i get that thing it's gonna be kind of hard to do so stay tuned <laughs> I was right. There we go. Good to go. This is the same Dexcom that you saw me just insert. So this is about 10 days later, it's been on there and it's it's stayed on really, really nicely. The exception, the rental car I had in Colorado, when you like turned off the car, the seat goes back to make it easier for you to get out of the car. But it would go back so that <laughs> one time I like just really caught it on the sort of the door frame when I was getting out of the car and it yanked it, uh, but it didn't hurt at all. So that's, that's kind of nice. It didn't hurt going in as you just saw and it just, it felt fine when it got yanked. I just... <laughs> and tacked it back down and it was all good. Ha let me let me show you, I guess we'll start with the type of data that I get. So you go into an, it's an, it works on an app and it's always a little hard for me to show you my phone. Actually, if I turn it this way, it shows it a little better. So this is the last 12 hours and you can see, but you can see kind of this dotted line along the bottom. And that is, that is my glucose, my blood glucose level. So the red line at the bottom, that sort of is low, as it's supposed to be. And you can see that it's quite low. Why did I start using a Dexcom? I'm not diabetic, so let's <laughs> get that out of the way, first of all. Um, I went, I did some routine um, blood tests with my doctor. My doctor doesn't do physicals. 
you're not supposed to go call, go to the doc, my doctor unless you're sick. <laughs> but I said, hey, like, could we just do maybe some routine blood work? And my blood glucose, not fasting or anything, just random, came back at 2.6. And sort of 4.6 is kind of the lower end, or you know. Um, so 3.9 is like sort of the critical low on this. So then they did another one, and then it came back at 4.6. But it's like, well, which is, and so like naturally the doctor's office is like, you're good. <laughs> but I was like, well, but how do I know which is like normal and even like that 4.6 is pretty low. So I decided I'm gonna give this a try, see what my blood glucose does and also see if it if it helps me make better decisions or, or do anything differently for both health and how I feel, but also just my, um, you know, training and to support my my performance. So what have I found? Well, it, um, it does go pretty low and maybe that's normal. Everybody's, you know, maybe it, it just, is part of the random randomness of it. The problem is at nighttime. So this is this is really designed for people who have diabetes. So it's 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 critical if their blood glucose gets too low. So it gives you an alarm that you can't turn off. So in the middle of the night when my blood glucose gets below 3.9, it'll be like bzz, bzz, like hey, wake up, like you got to look after yourself here. You can turn that off for 6 hours at a block. So what I do is when I, because every night it would go below like a couple times. So what I did was I turned that off for six hours and um, then, you know, it would like from three o'clock in the morning on or whatever, it might, might be giving me a buzz, but I'd rather that get that good block and then deal with it. And it seemed like closer to morning, I wasn't getting quite so low. So that was a benefit. I get these episodes where I feel kind of shaky and I can still train and do everything, but I'm, I feel really shaky in, inside. Um, and a couple of times those course, I, I would look and I'd be like, okay, my, my glucose is low. So that was kind of an, a little interesting, not all the time though. So it's, again, is it coincidence or, um, you know, is it, is it related? Uh, rice, I found it was crazy. Like if I, even brown rice, it would spike really, really high. So that was, that was quite interesting to me. Interesting if I had a beer, you know, psh, blood glucose would shoot way up. Obviously, if you have, you know, any sweets, but it's kind of funny because on the weekend, you know, we might eat out or something like that. Like, so here's a snapshot on the weekend, you know, and it's like, see those big peaks and valleys because we went out for lunch yesterday and then for breakfast, we had like a bit of a different breakfast than I normally have during the week. And so then on the weekend, it's like, but then on the week where I sort of eat, not the exact same thing, but the same type of thing all the time. It's a lot more smooth. Like, so today I've had like my normal, like weekday breakfast, usually one day on the weekend, I'll sort of have a little splurge day, but so that's been kind of interesting. Is it going to change anything that I do? Yeah, I'll probably eat a little, and not that having like higher blood glucose is like the worst thing, but it's, you know, I want it to stay fairly, you know, sort of, these kinds of curves rather than these kinds of curves. So I will kind of go a little lighter on rice if I'm when I have a good quality protein that helps keep it level. And one day I had scrambled eggs and two slices of toast and it was um, a French loaf that I'd made myself, but still just like unbleached flour. And I thought, oh, this, these two, like, and they're like little pieces of toast like that. I thought, oh, these are gonna spike that. And they didn't, it, it was really smooth. So it's funny because the things you think are gonna be sort of higher glycemic, sometimes don't spike it, but the brown rice really did. So it just kind of was more interesting. I will, um, I won't get another one right now. I'll, you know, I feel comfortable that it's like, okay, my blood glucose isn't sort of critically low all the time. I think it's probably a normal variation. Learned a few things about eating and stuff like, like types of food that I eat, but it's good. It's not gonna, it's not gonna really dramatically change anything I do. When I exercise, it brings it down. Um, kind of nice. I've got a cold right now, so I'm not running. But even if I go for a walk with Oslo after dinner, you know, it kind of helps bring it down. So that was kind of interesting as well. But just, yeah, fun little experiment. Continuous glucose monitor. Just like, that's it. Like, that's amazing. Now, if they get one of these that can measure blood lactate, I'm going to be all over, <laughs> all over that. But very, very cool to see what they can do. Uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have any experience with it, some of you would be diabetics and, you know, really use it to help control your diabetes and manage your insulin. I'd love to hear your experiences with it. Even if you're just a, an athlete, you know, an, a recreational athlete, uh, like I am, tell me if you've used one and what you, what you learned from it. Um, cause maybe I'm just not 
maybe I'm missing something. So uh, I'd love to hear more from you. I'm not an expert in this area by any stretch. So if you are, uh, chime in and, and let, let me know. But otherwise, I'll catch you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. I love you guys. Whoosh.